Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, First Church family and friends. Grace and peace. Happy brink of New Year. How many of you are excited for this new day that God has made? Amen. Yeah. Yes. How many of you are grateful that 2023 is closing and 2024 is here? Yeah, 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 yeah. How many are grateful that you can see a new day? My God. So as we gather in this worship, I want to welcome everyone to worship because we have come to rejoice and bless the Lord with all Amen. our souls. Amen. Yes, God. God has been too good and brought us through too much. And so as we come to worship the Lord in spirit and truth, I want to welcome everyone to worship this day. Today leading us in worship is our amazing choir and the ministerial team of First Church and you all as well. So if you are here for the first time, we want to make sure that you feel welcome, whether you're in virtual church or in sanctuary. If there's any way that we can help you, just let us know. If you have a cell phone like mine right now, I realize I don't expect Jesus to call me on my cell phone. Unless you're expecting Jesus to call you on your cell phone, just please mute it or turn it down so we don't have the extra songs going on. Amen? Amen. As we prepare to enter into worship, I invite you to just take a deep breath in. Gently let it out. That's for God, our creator. Breathe in. That's for Jesus, our redeemer. Breathe in. That's for the sweet spirit, our sustainer, that's in this place as we now prepare our hearts to hear that musical prelude in the bleak midwinter. Welcome to worship. Hallelujah. Amen. We now please rise as you're able and help us joyfully sing our opening hymn, He Came Down. Hallelujah.
now in our call to worship. Hallelujah. In our looking into the coming year, may the God of hope be with us. In our lamenting the, sorry, in our lamenting the losses of the year past, may the God of peace be with us. In our celebration of Christmas, may the God of joy be with us. In our caring for the world, may the God of love be with us. In our living of life in all of its fullness, well, may we know that God is with us. Amen. 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 Join me in the invocation. Merciful and loving God, we just thank you for this brand new day that is filled with brand new mercies that we have never experienced before. Yes, God. Yes. And so as we gather together this last Sunday of this year, we invite you in. Yes. You are welcome in this place. You are welcome in our hearts and our minds and in this time of worship. Yes. So Lord, just come on in, yes. take a seat and enjoy the praise. Yes. It's in the matchless name of Jesus, we all pray, amen. 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 You may be seated. Our Father, Lord, oh Father. Oh, join me in the, the Lord's prayer. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Now you can be seated or you can remain standing as, we, as the choir comes now in the selection of Make Room. Thank you. 
take a moment and meditate on that song. It is an invitation to make room in your heart. Amen. To make room in your heart for God to write your story. Oh my God. Amen. Oh my God. As we prepare our hearts and minds to go into a new year, oftentimes we want to write what it's going to be. We're so glad to be gone with the year prior. But I invite you to make room in your heart yes. for God yes. to write your story. Yes. Amen. 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 Dr. Thank you, Reverend Dean. Angela. Is there room in your heart? Now let's make room in our schedule. <laughs> Talk about it. All right, lady. Amen. <laughs> thank all the donors who made contribution towards the purchase of these lovely flowers here. Uh, we will continue to display them until the end of the day, and you are welcome to take them home after today. To God be the glory. Amen. Our watch night service will be tonight at Crawford United Methodist Church. It's in the Bronx. Please see the bulletin or the newsletter for more details. Next week, Sunday, our New Year's service will start at 11 a.m. Mm. Here are some church reopening guidelines just to remind you that wearing masks is optional. However, if you have a cold or if you're not feeling well, we ask that you do wear a mask. We ask everyone to please sign in your attendance at the front. There's a sheet provided for you to fill in your name. We ask that you also take your temperature and sanitize your hands before entering the sanctuary. Please practice social distancing and walk in a single file while entering and leaving the sanctuary. Our tips at home and tips intervention, telehealth intervention program for seniors will resume on Tuesday, January 9th. In case you don't know, they offer free vital sign monitoring and social support services for seniors. They do have an article component. You may see Sister Jean Wall for more information. All, that, all the details are noted in our newsletter and online. Our prayers meetings will be on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. There's a unique number for them, please take note. And Wednesday mornings at 6 a.m., they also have a unique calling number. Please join. Our Phoebe Joy Just Older Youth Senior Adult Ministry will be meeting on Wednesday, January 3rd. They do have their unique Zoom line. If you look in your chat for those online, you'll see a link to our bulletin. You may see the information there. Those of you worshiping in church, please see the information in your bulletin. We also have a online fellowship, which is our Wednesday Bible study. We'd like all of you to join on January 3rd at 7.30 p.m. It's via the church's Zoom. In your giving, please consider making a financial contribution to our food pantry 
to aid in purchasing items that are needed for the distribution. Our next distribution will be this Tuesday, January 2nd at 9.30. For more information, you may visit our website or see Brother Gums or Brother Cummings or email the church. By the way, we're packing tomorrow at 4 p.m., so please join us. Mm. And then on Thursday, we have fresh produce that we'll be distributing. That will be Thursday, January 4th at 9.30 a.m. And for that, we need help to pack on Wednesday, January 3rd at 4 p.m. The United Women in Faith will be meeting on Saturday, January 6th at 10 a.m. They have included their new Zoom link information. Please see the bulletin for more information on that. Before I move on to the birthday greetings, I would like to invite Sister Susan to come up with her special announcement. Thank you, Sister Leon. Good morning, church. Good morning. So I'm standing here before you in the presence of God Amen. to extend an invitation to a 21-day fast. So, as the Spirit leads you, this is the time, the beginning of the year, of renewal, renouncing the things of 20 that you might have gotten yourself involved with or whatever you might have said or done, repenting and asking the Lord God to guide you in a new way for 2024. We know that the Bible tells us that it was just after 40 days and 40 night fast that Jesus started his, he went up to the mountain to fast and he started his ministry. So it's a time when we extend, there are a few of us here that are doing, it's a 21 day fast and you might say, so why do I fast? Why am I fasting? Guess what? That's a question to God. You prayerfully ask the Lord God to guide you what it is that you, he's pressing in on your heart to do for this 2024. Remember the words in Matthew chapter 6, verse 16 to 18. Jesus is speaking. He said, but when you fast, not if you fast, but when you fast. So we know as Christians, it is our part of our growing in our faith to fast and seek the Lord for more of what he wants to do with our life for him. We are made for a purpose, and that purpose in God must be fulfilled. So I'm going to ask you, if you want to join in this 21 day fast, let me know. Or if you feel more comfortable, talk to our pastor, Reverend Branch, and she will pass the, all of the information on to you, or I can email it to you. Okay, church? Please Amen. prayfully ask the Lord God and let your heart be your guide. Thank you. Amen. 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 Try to be like it, and it, it will definitely make you a better person. And now for the birthday announcements, um, it's for the tribe of Zebulon. This week we are honoring Reverend Daniel Sarpon and Ooh. Sister Jackie Taylor. Amen. Woo. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And now I'd like to invite Reverend Dorlemar LeBron to please come up to do the invitation to tithes and offerings. <coughs> Hope I'm using the right mic. Good morning, church. Good morning. It is so good to be with you all. Um, I don't know about you, but it's been a long year. <laughs> I think a lot of people have been saying that. I don't know if we say this every year, um, but it has been a long year, and I know that I've come this far by faith. faith. Amen. Leaning on God's love Word. and God's truth and God's strength and God's hope and God's generosity. Yes. Because despite it all, God has been generous with us. Amen? Amen. And so this actually is one of my favorite moments in the worship service, our generosity moment. That's how I see this time of our worship. Because our time to respond and to give back to God. In Matthew 10, uh, Jesus presents a charge to his disciples and he says, you have been treated generously, so live generously. Yes. And so God's generosity is all around us, and a way that we share our love and our faith is also through our generosity. And so now is the time 
where we share love, where, where if you're here in person, uh, you greet your neighbor. If you're online, you, I want you to affirm yourself. Maybe you can hug yourself, love on yourself. Show yourself some generosity as we prepare our hearts to show generosity through our tithes and offering. And so as we reflect on all that God has done this year and will continue to do in the new year, let us allow God's generosity to inspire yes. us yes, to Lord. live as blessings to others. Yes. I want to invite you to give from a generous heart, to give of your offerings, of your pledges, but of your time, of your heart, of your ideas. And as we prepare to do this, and I want to invite the ushers to get, uh, to get into place to prepare, uh, I hope that we can strive to maintain this generosity of spirit in this new year. Amen. Because we know that our generosity supports all the ministries we just heard of. It supports this worship team. It supports this community and supports our witness yeah. in this community. So here at First Church, if you are a member of the house, you know you can come up and place your offerings directly into this basket. You know that if you need to give online in the back of your program, there's a little barcode that can take you where you need to go to give online. If you're online, um, there are all these things on our website to show you the app, the bank, in worship. There's no excuse. Mail it. We need your support. We want you to be a part of what God is doing here at First Amen. Church. Amen. So I hope that as our ushers prepare to, to guide us into this next moment that we will give with a generous heart. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you. 
Gracious God, thank you for this moment. Thank you for your sweet, sweet spirit that is already in this place. Yes, God. We thank you because yes, your Lord. promises are sure, because you are faithful and we can rely on you. Your word says that we find joy in offering our time, talents, and resources to meet the needs of others. Help us to give freely and cheerfully toward the work of your kingdom right here in Mount Vernon as it is in heaven. May you cause the seeds that we sow today to grow into a well-watered, fruitful tree of life in this new year. Yes, God. God bless us and keep us and may God's face shine upon us. May God's face shine within us and if need be in spite of us, oh God, turn your face toward us and give us peace. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray, amen. 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 as we go before the word of God. Let us pray. Guide us, O Lord, by your word and Holy Spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Our first scripture this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Hear these words. But those who wait for the Lord my, my. shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Yes, they yes. shall walk and not faint. Amen. And my grandmother would teach, say, mm -hmm. oh Lord, teach me how to wait. Yes. Is what Abuela would say. Our New Testament lesson <laughs> comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 and 10. Hear these words. But you said to me, but he said to me, my grace mm, is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore I am content 
with weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am. Y'all didn't say that like y'all didn't know it's the truth. Amen. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. Yes, Lord. Our gospel lesson, will you please rise as you're able to hear the words from Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. And they say, come to me all who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Thanks be to God. This is the word of God for the people of God. And we say, Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of our God as our choir ministers to us. Perfect praise.
That there's no reason to shout But the impossible is God's chance To work a miracle A miracle So just know Until God says it's done No, 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 no It ain't over Until God says it's over Keep fighting Until your victory is won Victory! 
if you're like me and you're just glad that it ain't over. Yes. You ought to get up to your feet and give God a great praise for the last Sunday in 2023. Hallelujah. It ain't over. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 This is the day that the Lord has made, Amen. and we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord one more time. Yes. It is a good day to be here. Yes. I am grateful, so grateful. Pray with me really quickly. Holy, most gracious God, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. I want to say thank you for your grace and thank you for your mercy. Father God, I want to say thank you for this day that I have never seen before. Yes. I thank you for what you're doing on this day. Yes. I thank you for allowing us to come in your house one more time to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Yes. Father God, as I stand behind this sacred desk one more time in 2023, I ask that you decrease Maya Clark and increase in the only way that you know how. Father God, decrease my flesh and increase your spirit. Holy Ghost, have your way. Holy Ghost, have your way. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. The, the title of my sermon this morning is Holding On to God's Promises, but for the preachers that are in the house, I love when God shows up unexpectedly and you already have a plan <laughs> and you already have a word mm -hmm. and you already have a sermon title mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden God says, no, this is it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so... On last night, my family and I, we went to see The Color Purple. Mm. And I've gone through a lot this year, so mm. I didn't expect that the movie was going to hit me or move me in the way that it did. Mm. And God told me, the title of your sermon, you can keep it, but you should add an attachment to it. Huh. And the attachment is, I am here. My God, yes. Holding on to God's promises because I yes. am here. Yes. On December 25th, 2023, the movie The Color Purple came out in theaters. And leading up to Showtime, all over social media, they were having premieres and many events advertising the movie. Fantasia Barino, who plays Silly, did an interview where she identified that when she did the color purple previously, she was bearing her cross and Celie's cross. She stated that she did not feel as beautiful, as important, as worthy as she does this time. She stated in the interview that when she played Celie, she was broke, unsure of herself, and bound. The interviewer asked her, what is different now? Fantasia responded and said, child, this is different because I know who God has created. I know that I am that girl mm -hmm. and no man can ever make me feel inadequate, unimportant, and unworthy again. So this time, what? every time I step in a room, I know I belong. Yes. And so in the movie, there's a scene where Mr a.k.a. Harpo, and the entire family is sitting at dinner. And Suge tells Harpo that she's taking Celie with her to Memphis. And Harpo expresses himself in a negative way. And Celie responds in a way where she stands finally in her power. Harpo tells Celie that she's black, that she has no talent, and that she's ugly. Celie responds with tears in her eyes. And she chuckles and she says, I may be black, I may have no talent, and I just may be ugly, but I am here. Amen. I don't know about you all, but I'm thinking that God has brought me from a mighty long way. 
and I'm standing before you on today, and I am here. The other night, I ended up going to sleep really late. I was working late. I got home, and I was still working at home. And it was like 1.30 in the morning, I finally was able to lay down. And all of a sudden, as I laid down, I began to feel a praise in my spirit. And I started to just say, God, I thank you. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. God, I'm grateful. God, I'm grateful for the lows that I've experienced this year. God, I'm grateful for the highs that I've experienced this year. Amen. God, I'm grateful that you protected my family this yes. year. Yes. God, I know in the beginning of this year, my grandmother had a cancer scare, but she is here. Amen. God, I'm grateful. Yes. God, I'm grateful that on last year, coming into the new year, my brother experienced an overdose. Yes. But this year, he has been clean. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. What I thought was going to break me this year ended up making me stronger. God, I thank you. And I just started giving God the utmost praise, not because I had to, but I felt in my spirit that God was doing a new thing in me. He was allowing me to reflect back over the year. He was allowing me to just stand in a place of gratefulness that not only has he done it again, but he has allowed me to see his promises come forth. The Lord Lord was telling me, hold on to my promises because my promises never come back void. I don't know about you, but I get excited to be reminded that he still walks with me. He still talks with me. He still reminds me that I am his. He still reminds me that I'm his own. I don't know about you, but I get excited about that. Have you ever found yourself in a place of disappointment, despair, disbelief, discomfort, and doubt of who you are or what you've allowed yourself to be a part of or involved in? Have you ever found yourself in awe of how far you've let yourself go or how far you've lost sight of the promises of God and the purpose he has for your life? The prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 40, 31 declares, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. The prophet Isaiah is encouraging us to find ourselves again and hold on to the promise that the Lord has for our lives. This year may have been filled with uncertainty. This year money may have been funny. Change may have been strange. Life circumstances could have thrown you for a windmill, but I've come to remind you on this day that you are here. Sometimes life is very similar to grief. The reason I say that is because we find ourselves in the lowest of lows, in the lowest seasons to grieve what we may have done, who we've been, who we have been connected to, and with grief. When you grieve someone, a loved one, each year, each moment, each season, grief looks differently. Time is not on our side, but day by day we find ourselves involved in something, connected to something or someone. And when we have those valley moments, we find ourselves finding revelation for either growth or clarity. So our focus scripture on today, the prophet Isaiah offers this to us as a reminder that there is good news coming in this season. In the midst of our weakness, in the midst of the darkest of times, those that wait upon the Lord, those that hope in the Lord, and those that trust in the Lord have something to look forward to. We just experienced the coming of our Savior, and he gave us the promise that he will come, and we know that he is surely coming back again. So we stand in expect expectation and anticipation, standing and trusting in the promise that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. We are encouraged to know that there is hope in the midst of our brokenness, that there is hope in the Lord, and we have confidence of knowing who our hope giver is. We may have experienced three different seasons this year, which I like to call the shaking, the breaking, and the pressing season. 
So in the shaking season, I believe we are reminded to have the utmost confidence in the one who has come and is coming, the one who will not slumber nor sleep, the one who is identified as our Redeemer, the one who is identified as Jehovah Jireh, the one who is identified as Elohim, the one who is identified as I am that I am, the one who is the lily of the valley, the one who is the bright and morning star, the one who is Jehovah Shalom, the one who is Jehovah Nisi, the one who is Jehovah over Rafa, the one who keeps me from falling, the one who dried my tears in the midnight hour, the one who saved my soul, the one who saved a wretch like me when I was undone, messed up, broken, the one who declares over my life his promises is true, the one who is my lily of my valley. When I'm down and out and there's no friends to find me, there's no friends that answer my call, I know that that there is one who holds my tomorrow. There is one who will give me joy in the morning. There is one who will give me comfort in the midnight hour. I don't know about you. I don't know how you guys are not excited about this. I don't know how you guys can't think back over your life and think about the one who has brought you through, but I believe in a man named Jesus, a man who, who went and gave his life for just you and me a long time ago. I believe in the one. The one. The one. The one. And so then we find ourselves in the breaking season. And in this season, I believe that the Lord allows us to see hope. The hope and renewing of one's strength. I don't know what this year has looked like for you. I don't know what battles you may have faced or where you found yourself broken down and placed in a position where only God could bring you out of. But I decree and declare that your hope in Christ will renew your strength, where you will mount up on wings like eagles and you will live again. You will love again. You will do exactly what he has for you because even in your brokenness, the Lord has good news coming. Jesus is coming to bestow brand new mercies and strength upon you. And then we lead to our pressing season where we find restoration at the end of the tunnel. We have to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I don't know what you may have gone through. You may have not even gone through anything this year, but I know that storms don't just stop. They do come again. So I want you to be reminded that even though you may have had a great year, I decree and declare that even in your down seasons, even in your valley seasons, even in your broken seasons, that there is is hope and there is light at the end of the tunnel and I believe that in the present season we find ourselves so stuck and so fixated on the breaking season we find ourselves so fixated on the shaking season because it shook us so much that we forgot that our Lord holds our tomorrow and we forget that there is light at the end of the tunnel because if he did it before he will surely do it again and so I decree and declare today that there is hope even in the midst of your doubt there is hope even in the midst of your disbelief there is hope even in your weariness there is hope despite your shortcomings there is hope even in your pressing towards the mark season Again, I don't know what life may have been like for you this year, but God's promises for you is for you to live a bountiful life. I had experienced an incident not too long ago. You know, sometimes when you experience different experiences, you kind of think that you're going to be broken down. You kind of think that this is the end, right? When you're in that valley moment. And so I've encountered I had encountered an incident where someone had spoke so low of me, to me, and they had spoke so down, and it made me feel as if their words held power. And I thought that if I had ever experienced this with this person, that I would find myself heartbroken or low down or just in the valley for too long. And the Lord declared over my life after that moment, I remember I ended up doing something that I wasn't supposed to. I was supposed to go with my grandmother somewhere and I ended up being home because I was too tired or whatever. And I remember I was, being in the, I was in the house by myself and I heard the Lord very clearly. And the Lord said, what you thought would make you weak, I'm about to make it make you strong. And I allowed myself to get up 
and I allowed myself to declare over my life that God, you bestowed upon me blessings. You bestowed upon me power. You bestowed upon me peace. You bestowed upon me purpose. And I decree and declare over my life that I am filled with purpose. I am filled with the Holy Ghost power. And no man, no woman, no child can destroy what you have brought into me and what you will bring into fruition. So again, I don't know what life may have been like for you. I don't know if you've ever experienced what I've experienced. Experience. I don't know if your family or your foes may always have something negative to say about you. I don't know if you've experienced the place of destruction or dysfunction, but I decree and declare that God wants to give you a free life, a life full of joy, a life full of peace that surpasses your own understanding, a life full of wisdom, a life full of growth, a life full of intention, a life full of purpose, a life full of power, a life that you are reminded reminded of who you are and whose you are. This year you are to be reminded that God's promises always comes back true and always comes to fruition. This year you are to be reminded that you are here. You are full of power. You are full of purpose. You are here filled with the Holy Ghost. You are here made anew. You are here strong and courageous because those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You are here even when death tries to sneak up on you. You are here even when the enemy tries to take your joy. You are here even though your friends may have turned their backs on you. You are here even though the lies of the enemy had you crying in the midnight hour. You are here by the power of the Holy Ghost. You are here because a man named Jesus has walked with you. A man named Jesus has talked with you and told you that you are his own. You are here because a man named Jesus Jesus a long time ago came down to earth to save a wretch like you and me. You are here because one Friday they beat him. On Friday they hung him high and stretched him wide. You are here because they placed thorns on his head. You are here because he bled and bled. You are here because he died. You are here because he died for you and me. You are here because you know that's not how the story ends. You are here because early one Sunday morning he got up. Up. You are here because he got up with all power in his hands. And he rose. I said he rose. And we know that he's coming back again. You are here because he is Jehovah Jireh. You are here because he has your back. You are here because he is your keeper. You are here because he is Jehovah Shalom. You are here because he is God. You are here because he is the Lord of Lords. You are here because he he is the king of kings. Y'all don't know where to get excited. Y'all don't know where to get excited. You are here because he is God and God all by himself. He allowed death to behave. He allowed sickness to cease. He allowed healing to go forth. He allowed breakthroughs to go forth. He allowed grace to go forth. He allowed mercy to go forth. And today, yes. you are here. Yes. Hold on to God's promises because you are here. Hallelujah for the Lord. His promises are faithful. Yes. God loves us enough hey. to make sure that we are here. Yes. And we are filled with power. Yes. And we're filled with purpose. Yes. And we can hold on. My God, my God. Thank you, God. Oh, we Thank can hold you, on. Yes. Thank you, God. Thank 2023 you. was real, y'all. Yes. We are here. We but are we here. are here by His grace. By yes. His grace. Yes. And by his mercy. Yes. If you're grateful to be here, just simply wave your hand. She talked about she woke up with a spirit of gratefulness in her soul when she thought about all God has done. Yes. Each of us.
had been through something. It's a miracle some of us are here, right, Miss Ann? Yes. Yeah. 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 True. And so we are grateful that there's a God that loves us. Yes. And sent a Jesus to save us and to walk with us. And that we have the spirit that will never, ever leave us. And if we let God write our story in the next year, we'll be even more grateful that we are here. So, beloved, if you don't know this Jesus that makes it possible for us to be here, I want to invite you to him. He's a wonderful Savior and a mighty God. And so, if you don't know Jesus, come and talk to us. We'll gladly tell you all about him, because he's a good God. And if you do know Jesus, and you need someone to pray with you, we got that too. There's many of us that would love to be that two or three with you to touch and agree so that you will know that you are not alone and there's someone here with you. And so if you need someone to pray with you, come, because we are here. And if you just need to hear Jesus for yourself, this is the last Sunday in the year. And the throne of grace is open. So if you want to just come, you may not make it to watch night tonight to, to, to lift up your prayers, but you don't want this new year to go by without you saying something to the Lord yourself. Come to the throne of grace. It's open. You can kneel and have your own personal time. If you want someone to pray with you, we will. But we don't want this moment to go by with you saying, thank you, Lord, for allowing me to be here. And we're going to hold on to every promise you'll give. So the throne of grace is open. Come and pray as your heart needs. Know that the Lord hears you because God is here. So come. Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Holy, most gracious God, we come now just to say thank you. We thank you for your grace and we thank you for your mercy. Father God, you know what each and every one stands in need of. Father God, we ask that you do what only you can do. Father God, someone may be standing in the need of a healing. We ask that you heal their body, Father God. We ask that you heal their mind, Father God. We ask that you heal their soul, Father God. Someone may be standing in the need of comfort due to bereavement, Father God. We know that you do not sleep nor slumber. We know that you are our comforter. So right now, we ask that you see about them, Father God. We ask that you give them peace that surpasses their own understanding. We ask that you remind them that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Father God, we thank you for your house where we can come forth and just kneel before you and leave our burdens at your feet. Father God, we're believing in a healing. 
We're believing in deliverance. So Father God, do what only you can do. We ask that you bestow joy upon your people, peace upon your people. Father God, we love you, we adore you, and we bless your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Beloved, go in grace and peace. Go in joy and comfort. Go knowing God has you both now and forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah, beloved. Well, we've come to the end of this service, but not the end of this year. As we prepare our hearts and mind for our closing hymn, please rise as you are able and go tell it on the mountain, because Jesus is here and so are you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Let's just give God praise. Hallelujah. 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 We bless God for letting us see the ending of 2023. And as we embark into 2024, I decree and declare over your lives more blessings, more peace more joy, more love, more wisdom, everything that God has for you. I pray that this year is the year that it's all brought to fruition as long as it aligns to the will that he has for your lives. Let us pray. Holy, most gracious God, we just want to say thank you. I want to say thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for all that you have done for each of us all year long. We thank you for allowing us to be here. We thank you for allowing us to be here in our right minds. Father God, we thank you for your, your power, your love, your joy that you continue to bestow upon us, even when we don't feel it or believe it ourselves. Father God, we thank you for, despite our disbelief, we thank you for continuously showing up and showing up for each and every one of us. We thank you, God. We thank you for your glory. 
Father God, as we depart from this place, we ask that you keep us protected from danger seen and unseen. We ask that you keep our minds stayed on you. We ask that our peace continues to surpass our own understandings. Lord, we love you. Lord, we adore you. And Lord, we bless your holy name. And most importantly, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for it all. We thank you for the good, the bad, the ugly, and the indifferent. Father God, we thank you for you being God all by yourself. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Blessed, blessed, blessed New Year, church family. See you in the new year. Minister Maya, thank you for that powerful word. Choir and ministry. Thank